I'm about to give Lynn a topic um, and some learning outcomes in Minecraft. Um, Lynn's a global Minecraft mentor and she's going to have maybe three to five minutes to sort of have a bit of quiet think to herself. And then we're going to collaboratively brainstorm a lesson um, and what that could look like in Minecraft. And then we'll start sort of getting the mechanics sorted out if necessary or start building the world as required. Um, so that's the general plan. So I'm going to bring Lynn. Hopefully she's sitting in the background there. Lynn, are you there? Hello, hello. Hello, I'm here. All right. So I've just told everyone what I'm going to do to you. And your topic, <laughs> should you choose to accept it, <laughs> um, is actually forces in Minecraft. Okay. And the outcomes that I'm thinking we want to cover, and again, you can change this any way you want, but the outcomes I'm thinking we should cover are the scientific process and perhaps getting a semi-formal or formal scientific report at the end. Does that sound like something you're going to be able to do? Oh, it sounds fun. All right, so I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to think about that and start brainstorming some ideas. Um, and I'll introduce you to everyone now with that little bit of a spiel I made up. How's that sound? Okay, that sounds good. All right, so I've got a little spiel here um, introducing Lynn. So Lynn Telfer is uh, a global Minecraft mentor, of course. Um, she's at Lynn Telfer, L-Y-N-N-E-T-E-L-F-E-R um, on Twitter. She's based in Melbourne, Australia, and she's also the Director of Learning for MindGage. She also teaches full-time and also, also is an M-I-E-E. Lynn has been using Minecraft in education for around about four years now and has many wide and varied lessons available on education.minecraft.net. Um, she's also an aspiring author with her first book soon to be released based on Minecraft in 2050. Uh, Lynn also has a blog available at minecraftlearnplayteach.edublogs.org. Here's the brainstorm document. <laughs> so hopefully... Lynn and I can come up with a fairly good um, lesson plan and also start building the world. Now, I'm not, not even assuming that we'll get anywhere near to the world done today. It depends on what the lesson plan is we come up with. But the whole process here is to sort of sit down and, and get a topic. And the future plan may be to get this topic from the community um, and find a mentor or a group of mentors that are suitable for for doing a lesson around that topic and putting them all together and, and brainstorming, think tanking, and then starting to create that lesson um, for the community as such. So kind of using the, using the um, community to gather information, but using the mentors to support the creation of those lessons. How are you doing over there? You nearly ready? Practically, yep. <laughs> All right, so start throwing things down. I'll write things down as best I can as you talk, if you would like, um, and I'll throw in any thoughts I have as we go, if that's okay with you too. All right. The problem is I can't hear you speak unless you hold your thing down all the time. Yeah, so that's okay. I was talking not to you. You were supposed to have quiet time then. <laughs> yeah, I'm having quiet time. All right. Excellent. Okay, so the scientific process. Ah, oh, this is going to be interesting. Now, what sort of um, age limit, age range we're we looking at here? What age range do you want to make it for? All right, I'm thinking um, a grade grade sevens. Okay, so grade sevens for those not in Australia, that's twelve to thirteen year olds. Exactly right, yeah. Okay, good, got that. What's next? All right, okay. So I'm thinking if we get them to do... Oh, wow, this is going to be fun, actually. Scientific methodology. Um, first thing we're going to have to do is get them to come up with a scientific question that we can then answer using Minecraft. Uh, let's see. Um... Well, it could be about anything, but I really like the idea of something to do with the environment, perhaps. 
Okay, so the topic was forces in Minecraft, but we can change that. This is our first run, so let's go with environment. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not actually a scientist. So. No, 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 that's right. Now I'm, I'm, on, I'm on the back foot now, not you. So I've got to start brainstorming around environmental questions they could answer. That's okay. Let's go with that way. <laughs> All right. Um, it's a bit hard to do push for talk. I'm trying to type at the same time. Um, <laughs> Get them, so my ideas up. Okay. Um, how about if we do the the water cycle, or or, or looking at um, pollution levels, or something like that, maybe? Yep. Keep going. So what what are we going to do around that? So we want them to come up with a question around the water cycle or pollution levels that they can then research, um, experiment on, and answer that hypothesis in Minecraft. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we can maybe look at um, changes in maybe water pollution if we, we can sort of simulate that in a river perhaps um, and they can use that as an idea of um, how we can do a scientific research on that. You're right, that push to talk thing's really hard. <laughs> Especially when you're typing and you push yeah, talk buttons I'm on your mouse. I'm you should just start a call in Discord with me rather than use the channel. Right, let's go that way. And that way we can just chat and get on with it. <laughs> All right, that sounds like a good plan. We'll be back in a minute, everyone. <laughs> All right, we're back. All audio right. on Twitch now too. I hid the audio on Twitch while we did that. All right, so now we don't have to hold down the push to talk. We can talk more naturally. That's a much better way to do it. So scientific yeah, process, yeah, yeah. target range, Grade sevens in Australia, which is twelve to thirteen year olds, we want a scientific question yeah. around the environment that we can then test yeah. and check in Minecraft and produce a report. We're thinking changes in water pollution, and are we able to mm -hmm. simulate this in a river in Minecraft and use that to yeah, base I'd their like research on? Okay. I really would like to see if we can. All right. Um, I, I'm not sure yet, and that's the joy of it. Um, and, and this is a kind of conversation you can also have in the classroom with the kids. How can we do this uh, with the kids? Um, and I actually really enjoy those conversations with the kids as well because they come up with ideas I just don't know. Um, and and um, because some of them have got some really good skills in the Minecraft section with um, red, redstone and command blocks and putting in little characters, they come up with ideas even better than what I can do at the time, so it's really quite fun. Okay, cool. So let's have a look. Um, All right, so I'm going to well. <laughs> get rid of that over there. So I've got the plan up over there. So we just want a standard world for this. Is that what you're thinking? I'm thinking so, yes. Yeah, standard world. We've got the environment ready to go. Um, I should put... Oh, well, I'm just writing a... Oh, I can't spell Lynn. <laughs> don't so worry, there's many spellings in my Let's name. go creative for now, peaceful, infinite. We want coordinates. We don't want always day for now. We probably want perfect weather yes. while we're building. We Do we want Thank mobs? You. We probably do want mobs because we want fish. We Six do want fish. What I'm thinking, uh, uh, as a way to simulate pollution, it would be a lack of wildlife in that, in that area of the river. So... We could also, mm, mm. Um, oh, you need my IP address to join this world. I do, I do. I'm I probably should have organised that before we got live on YouTube or Twitter. Oh, no, 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 where are we, Twitch? It's, done. it's all good. No, no, I'm not going to show them how it's done because that'll give everyone my IP address. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have many people joining. It's <laughs> got to be a mentor, but yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we do have a, a river here, and I'm wondering whether this oh, is something cool. we should... Um, customize a little bit further than this and whether having like a um, world painter world oh no there's a, a darker area up here I was thinking because the water changes color in different biomes we could paint mm. paint those biomes down the path of a river and then use that um, to help us get the idea across that the water is getting more and more polluted because the water in sort of the grasslands area is quite bright and blue and nice. Um, looks a bit yes. murkier in tiger, and it's absolutely disgusting in swamps. So, 
So I'm wondering whether <laughs> whether we could use World Painter or something to actually get that kind of I flow. I think that's a really, really smart move. Um, and also, we could either get the kids or ourselves to build um, a factory. Yes. And then they can also um, look at building maybe a, an alternate where we've got some wind power or something. Okay, yeah, so it's same world, so, same, same world so twice that, over. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, there's no swamps nearby. Here. There's no swamp nearby that we can hijack that I can find at the moment. Okay. It's logging in now. Awesome. Plenty of deserts and plateaus and <laughs> there we go, signing in beautifully. That should be fine now. Let me just get organized here. Beautiful. Alright, play. Now servers. And this time I won't watch the IP address. <laughs> oh, that would I be found. a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's alright. It's only Matt watching in the background. <laughs> I think he's probably I think he's probably already asleep. <laughs> he All did right, say it's, um, it's getting close to bedtime for him. So I have found a swamp. Um, actually, yeah, that's so probably not going to be. I mean, it will, it will have to do a bit of customize. Oh, here's a huge swamp over here good, with a jungle good. on one side. So it's nice and vibrant blue on one side, and then it comes down into a horrible swampy color on this side. Because we could yeah, actually, I've, I just had another thought here. Um, set world uh -huh. spawn. Um, with this, we could clone the terrain. Oh, oh even mirror the terrain. One, aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm talking to myself more than anything. Hey, how are you? Um, so hey. we could we could copy a river. Um, from one biome to another. So they have the same river, the same path, have one that's all clean and pretty, and one that runs through a swamp, which has the factories and stuff on it. Oh, there you are. There we go. Oh, that would be a really idea. Do you get what I mean? Idea. So we've got this lovely yeah. river on the left side here, depending on which way you're looking, and we could copy that mm -hmm. over into the swamp here and have it on the right-hand side. Um but we come back to the scientific proceed or scientific processes about fair tests and things like that. So, what sort of exactly. research or experimentation are we going to be able to get them to do based on the water in Minecraft? So, right. without too much customize. Oh, uh, hey, um, we have <laughs> grass and stuff in the water here. Yes. And we could remove uh, the turbidity. You could talk about how many blocks can you see. That is excellent, yes. So if I'm um, standing here, I can see maybe one, two, three, four blocks. What's that like in normal water? Is there a difference? Good yeah, now huge difference. The, yeah, now that we, Oh, that's incredible. So you could discuss turbidity. I should be writing this down. Mm -hmm. Hang on, I'm going to get my... So we need... Yeah, write that down. Are we look, is there any change in the um, vegetation between these two biomes, or is it just standard? Uh, it looks to be standard, but that doesn't mean we can't customize it. Because <laughs> yes, the grass, I think that's the way to go. The grass um, appears the same. Um, as far as fish go, there are way there aren't like uh, there's not very many fish in the swamp water. So you could do a, a population sample, um, beautiful. If you know what I mean. So we could population yeah. sample because I saw a fish over in the river. Yeah. So there's fish swimming in the river here. Excellent. So we could do a population sample. So let me get the one note back up for that. So we've got turbidity, um, a population sample. Yeah. Is that kicking you off every time I go into one note? No, no, it's not. It's all good. Interesting. Working fine. Good. Oh, I just got kicked off the server. Yeah, okay. You yeah. spoke too soon. <laughs> so we've got population <laughs> samples in terms of fish. Mm. 
Um, and we also talked about in terms of the greenery and the and the um, difference there in terms of. We've also can um, look at maybe the the chemistry involved with pollution in the water. Okay. What's, what's actually the main kind of chemicals that are cause the problems that are in rivers? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I can't. Um, I can't keep typing. You're going to have to keep typing. <laughs> I... All right. I'm just going to be looking at some blocks here while you're doing that and seeing what we could use to represent pollution um, as well. It's running in maybe lava or something. Here we go. Population sample uh, fish. Uh, population sample um, water. What is it? Flora. Yes plants yes. um, and you were talking about chemistry um, of pollution what chemicals um, the other thing I was thinking also yep, chemistry involved yet is it doesn't look like we have to do too much tweaking of the natural generation other than the plants um, mm -hmm. the turbidity I think is very cool a very cool discussion point that we could have um, in that respect but I also think we could if we had them in survival do you think it would be a good idea to make them ill <laughs> for lack of a better way of saying it <laughs> so oh, that's an interesting thought because um, I'm actually starting to think we could actually have command blocks um, where if they step on something, they can get sick from it. Yeah, so we can have it so they get sick when they get in an area. Um, yeah. All right, so I think what we need to do if is we've got a fair idea of what we want to do in terms of we we're going in terms of in terms of actually building the world in what we have here. It's not going to work right now because we want a custom world more than what we've got here. Yeah. So yeah. we're going to need to do that later. So let's talk about mechanics and let's talk about and, and start sort of getting some of those mechanic things happening. So do we want kids to get sick when they're in a swamp area? And what sort of okay. sick do you want them to get? Do you want them to get poisoned? Do you want them to get... Yeah, yeah, definitely poisoned. Oh, I'm disconnected on the server again. You must have gone somewhere. Uh, <laughs> no, I didn't. That's interesting. Ah, well, hey, I'm going to blame all the koala internet um, <laughs> that's in Australia. <laughs> Don't give them more ammunition on Australia. There you go. Now you're in. We actually run by koalas. It must be on guitar and something like that um, that looks a bit diseased around there. Maybe some magma rock that looks a bit, you know. Have you put magma gross. rock underwater? If this works the same as it does in Java, I haven't done it in here, but if this works the same as it does in Java, oh, it doesn't look like it does. In Java, that uh, creates doesn't. a bubble stream. Oh, that would have been amazing. But still, that to me looks like it's it's poisoned, it's wrong. You yes. Know, um, yep. 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 So if we had a, a a river of that coming from a bill, um, and then if you go near that, that's where you can get sick. And maybe we can even make it that animals get sick if they go near it. Yeah. So that's that's easily done. That's just um poisoning all entities. Um, yes. Okay. So students. So the basic premise of the map at the moment is students are going to do a walk by both yeah, different think so. things and then Perhaps maybe um yeah maybe if we've got an npc that introduces them to this polluted world and say that we need you to use the scientific methodology to work out what's going wrong and, and experiment and then maybe um suggest solutions okay all right beautiful and then that, All right, they just... can do a physical tour of the river, the clean one, and then a physical yeah. tour of the dirty one. 
um, and then decide yes. what they're going to have a look at. And the NPC could give them some ideas about, hey, have a look at the, you know, and go and research what turbidity is and how they how that's measured um, and translate that to Minecraft. That would actually be really powerful and learning. That would be very powerful. And um, we can direct them to websites that we've made ourselves um, that can directly relate to whatever they're researching including um one that's just telling us what telling them what the um scientific methodology is yeah okay um and we can cater for that um if we've got mpc and they've got different buttons for different age groups or different levels yeah we can take you to different websites different uh, for different um, reading levels too uh, and um, yeah, I think that that would be really, really good that we could. Uh, what are the problems that you want to investigate? Yeah. Um, so yeah. Well, the there, first thing is, what problems did you find? What did you notice? Yeah. What you, so that's observation. So if we go through and say, okay, walk, walk. So for example. Let's say this mirror was uh, this mirror this river was mirrored along the diagonal line, right? And they yeah. could walk along yeah. this this spit of land here, all right, that we're on, and yeah. look at the same river on either side, one polluted and one not, and they could talk about their observations, and then they could they I mean quite clearly there's a difference between these two different types of water, right? So they're going to yes. notice some stuff like that. You might notice that, you know, the grass is, well, we're going to have to custom that, but the grass is not there. Um, the, I can't see any fish in the water. I can't trees see anything like that. The trees don't look very healthy um, and that sort of stuff. Yeah. We could even put dead bushes along the, can you put dead bushes yeah, on it on grass? Definitely. More mechanics. The, oh, there's dead I'd, I'd coral. Use, um is there really excellent you can definitely put that and you can put that in the water here yeah okay but what about dead bushes can you put dead bushes you can't put dead bushes on grass you can only put them on sand so that's something to that's keep okay. in mind uh, what about on soul sand Ooh. soul sand looks really nasty it does <laughs> that's horrible to walk on too <laughs> All right, so let's put some soul sand down. I don't... No, you can't. So you could probably do it on red okay. sand. Dirt, perhaps. Not dirt, but, um, only sand from what I've seen so far. Only sand. Okay, so you'd be able to do red sand or white sand. So that's something else you could do. You could retexture. You could mm -hmm. you could really mess with stuff. Red. And, and make the red sand more of a, a grey brown yes and then the white sand is on the clean river and the grey blocky sand is on the not clean river yep as an option and I, I, on one side um another thing that might be interesting and Forgive me for sort of starting all over the place with my thinking. Um, That's the way I do it. Um, for example, when it comes up to their solutions, um, ooh, 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 now I'm thinking. Um, <laughs> if they build, say, say over here, they, they were to build a solution, which would be like a, a wind farm or something. Yeah. And they're told to destroy the factory and put in a wind farm. Um, and once that's done, they... Um, can then click a button which we can make it appear somehow. Yeah, that's, that's click doable. A button, and then we can clone an area that's, you know, outside their view, clone an area in, and suddenly that has all the clean water. I wonder whether we can do that with a biome. So when we copy, when we clone something, yeah. do we clone the biome with it? So we're going, I'm going to try something here. All right. Um, so let's clone some of this river. To get the water clean, we'd have to have the biome changed. Now that could be 
it could be instead of cloning a part of the environment, yes, see it, you, you, that button might be clone the windmill they just created to a yes. second custom area and teleport the student there as an option. <laughs> that's clever. So do it the yes, reverse. That's worth doing. Um, but that, yes. so let's, so I'm going to copy from the other here. Thing is that can, if they built in, say, a rectangle, um, let's just quickly make this, all right. Make a little rectangle here. Just pretend here that they had to build in this area here, okay? A tiny rectangle here for an idea. Um, and we then made that the area that gets copied. We can then copy that ten times into different places. Yeah. So when they go there, some line of the windmill is now scattered around the area. So it's not just one copy. Yes. All right. So that is the solution. I mean, we are directing them to a solution, I know, but um, that would be Yeah, hard. so I've just cloned a bit of an area, and you can see that I've actually cloned your little rectangle. Um, the water Yay! the water does stay swampy, so if we're going to do it in that way, we're going to have to do yeah, the, yeah, the multiple me. biomes. Uh, which is fine. It just it's just we're gonna have to custom the world a bit, that's all. all right. So yeah, I think transporting them to a it's all clean already. Close onto that area look fine. It's very clean and neat. Yeah, alright. Okay. Okay. I like that. Come on, wake up. Very cool. Okay. Cool. So hopefully you won't get kicked out now. Move over into different biomes. Um, multiple copies mm -hmm. in various stages of yes. cleanliness. Um, one thing we haven't talked about is how many kids in the map. Is this a class map, a small group map, or a individual? Oh, that is a good point. That is a good point. I'm, I'm thinking individual in a way for this particular idea of the, the wind map. Um, I think individual. Okay. Maybe small group, perhaps, if they're all going to build the windmill together. Two or three people. Okay. That'll uh, work. Two to three. I mean, you want, you want collaboration. Maybe maybe small group like that. Yeah. As long as they're building that one thing. Um, all right. So, when they... Here I am going around all over the place again. When they, they meet their... The person that they greet greets them and tells them um, about the scientific methodology and that, th that they, there's problems in this world. Yeah. Um, and they go exploring. Can we have either posters or other NPCs that they can talk to about those particular problems they've discovered? Um, I think we maybe can. Maybe NPCs because then we can then direct them to more information about how. You would drop you out just to the important part. <laughs> all these different um, things that they've come across. And here, for example, there's a person with a tree causing this, um, and then they can direct you to to looking at that that side of it. Yeah, check. Um, it. Yeah, yeah. I like that. So have a look at how murky the water is. You yeah, know? and then yeah, someone's fishing here. Um, oh my gosh, my fish looking is pretty sick. Look at the water. I can't even see in. Yeah. What are we gonna do about that? Yeah, yeah, I, I think we can definitely make it a, a very um, quest-based in a way. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, there's a huge difference in that water. It's great. Yeah, yeah, that's great, isn't it? Is the timing's perfect for this project? Yes. Um. <laughs> All right. right. So. Okay. So in control. terms of command blocks, and. Yep making kids sick when they're in an area or making all see the other thing you can do is you can actually make all entities sick um uh so if we if i get uh, okay. there you go you can have a command block too <laughs> um effect at e 
Um, we also need it to talk and say, um, warning, you are in a, a poisonous area, something like that, so they know what's going on. Uh, so if we do this, mm -hmm. you're poisoned. Gravel can't have an effect. We gave poison to the sheep. We gave poison to the squid. We gave poison to... Oh, sorry, dolphins. We gave poison to some dolphins. Oh, um, we're going to be burned in hell. <laughs> <laughs> so that command, I'll put it in here. Um, mm -hmm. Because then we also want to put that um, to a radius. Uh, so radius of say twenty blocks. Oh, oh why would you do it. that? No, it's all right. Why did I do that? Oh my god! I clicked on it to look at no, it, right. and it died. I'm sorry. Um, no, 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 no. It's all on all on uh, R equals twenty. Um, <laughs> Daniel, you need to be a uh, school. I've got someone asking a question in chat, um, asking me how you get really? Minecraft I edu. Um, Daniel, you need to be a, a student and your school needs to have Office 365 accounts um, and that's how you get it. So yep. we're or the only teacher. people that got, yeah, or a teacher, yeah. Um, we're the only people that got poison that time because we're within 20 blocks of this one here. So you could set that up on a timer. So, so if I change this to a repeat command that's always active, um, we'll always get it. <laughs> Anytime we're in this area, we will get poisoned. Um, okay, that's good. So there's that sort of option as well. Uh, and then yep. following on from that, you can also do a slash title. I can never remember. I should um, turn that one off for now. Oh, yeah, that title is a brilliant way of doing it. Yeah. Um, so we should stop getting that message. So slash title um, yeah, at a in a radius of twenty, mm -hmm. right? Um, we probably want it as a title, so it's nice and big. Yep. You have been poisoned. There's probably too many characters. We put that in here. Uh, pollution alert, maybe? Ah. Rather than poisoned? Yeah, pollution alert. I like it. If I could spell pollution, it would be much easier. Pollution alert. <laughs> right. Oh, you're still on repeat. Why are you still on repeat? I can't change that back off repeat. That's interesting. Uh, what if I... Hmm. Grab a redstone block. Can I then turn it off? Interesting. Uh, let's go in here, grab the command, and nuke it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yep, that's the way. <laughs> put, the, put the command back in. Um, in pulse, I'm going to just need redstone. That's fine. Yeah. Right, and then this one needs to be a chain and yeah. conditional so that it only does it if people um, have been poisoned. So we should get a pollution alert. Yes, got it. You know, and the poor cow got it too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great. Um, and we get that for 10 seconds and it, and the longer we stay in the area the, the more we get of that um, the issue is the title will still come up um, and that's fine that, that that's okay um, until they until they leave the area yeah it only has know. to be a small area uh, where they come up and have a look at the, the you know the outlet that's coming out of the factory oh yeah good point um, okay so if we make okay. it a radius of five instead Ooh, not 50 yeah and maybe have the NPC beside here saying oh I don't feel well 
Well, they'll get. If it's anything to do with these horrible stuff I wonder here. whether they'll get poison as well. Let's grab one and see. Experiments oh, 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 on non player characters. So there he is. Alright. No, they didn't. Because no, they're not they classed. They're not classed as an fine. It's fine. Alright, but now, you got. Did you get the title? Yeah, I did. Okay, so did. now um, fly away a little bit. Question. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, with that NPC, you know how you can modify the skins? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe we can make her look a bit green and sad. Yeah, that's easy to do. Okay. So we're going to need custom map map, um, and some custom textures as well. Uh, NPC. We really have fun with that. Possibly sand as well. Um, yep. So now you're more than five blocks away. You shouldn't have got that title alert. Did you get a pollution alert? No, all good. Excellent. Um, so now let's make that. I wish we could make these different colours, but we can't yet. 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 <laughs> there we go. That looks a bit better. All right. Yep. So we have that process there, and that could be, like I say, that could be just a repeating a repeating command block there. I won't make it repeating again. Um, that could just be a repeating yeah, command block. Actually, I'm going to do it, sorry. I'm going to do it. Always active. Go. Yep. Right. And now both yep. of us fly away for a second. Yeah, I didn't get that message. I was far enough out. Yeah, see, I got it. Pollution alert, the message is gone. And the title... And So if I fly back in, that's the only time I get the alert is when I'm within five blocks. Ah, oh, yep. but because it keeps on triggering, I only get it pale. So go over and have a look at what happens when you go over there. See how it goes all pale on you? It's still good, though. It's it's flashing at me. Pollution alert, pollution alert. Yeah, all right. So it's actually kind of works. <laughs> Except the poor cow. <laughs> I don't think that. I think there's a feature rather than a bug. <laughs> there we go. He won't get it anymore. <laughs> oh, poor guy. No, no cows were harmed in the recording of this. Food. No, no how. No cows were harmed in the making of this map. Um, <laughs> all right. So that's sort of at the yeah. factory yeah. there, and then what else do we need for kids to? Mm -hmm be able to explore do we want them to go to a, a like if we're talking about doing the scientific uh, method kind of thing that's that's around um you know fair tests and stuff like that so yeah. if you're going to stand two blocks deep here and look how far you can see oh it changes the longer you're under the under the waterfall um, but I can see, so if I stand on this block here, one, two, three, four, five-ish blocks away. Yeah, probably five blocks away I can see accurately there. Yeah. And if I go over here and stand, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, okay, so there is a big difference there. Um, Beautiful. But you need to be standing in the same depth water and stuff like that. So that's where the the scientific method and the fair tests and everything. Tonight. Sorry, it's going to annoy them. Yeah, it's annoying that we can't actually start. I'm sort of excited about the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that will work. That will work. So recapping, we land on the world. We see a fork of a river. Ooh, um, I like that a river fork. Clean. What? Yep. And one side is polluted. And we're still standing in the middle there. We've got our guide who's saying, Oh my goodness, this place is terrible. We need your help. Yeah. Look up the scientific methodology if you need to. Um, even have posters up talking about it as well for those people who don't want to actually click on the website. Yeah. What we're learning here. Um, Right. How yep. easy is it in Education Edition to run a voice over file? 
it's doable. I haven't done it yet. Theoretically, I should say theoretically it's doable. Um, I haven't done it yet. It's just if we're doing custom resource packs anyway, it's actually going to be easy. If we're doing custom textures for NPCs and blocks and yeah. things, adding in yeah. custom sounds is not going to be um, an impossibility. Because then we've got voice as well, um, and that really does cover uh, more learning styles. So, all right, um, um, possibility. I've done it quite a bit with um, other platforms, but I haven't actually tried it in Education Edition. So, uh, if you get close to the NPC, if there's a command block underneath her, yeah, um, can then start talking at you as well. Yeah. Um, anyone within the radius. Um, and obviously you can still click on her and she'll say and read that. in that description you can have exactly what she's saying as well yeah okay so so I've got here in your summary spawn a river fork one side clean one side polluted guide saying there's a problem. Look up how to be an accurate scientist in terms of the scientific method. Having some posters as well as the possibility of voices. Um, and then uh, first activity is to just um, wander the river. Yeah, please wander around and... Um... Uh, and observe differences. Um, and then we would come back. So I'm thinking of a lesson here. So the first first thing kids are doing is spawning in and having a chat to the person there. And then yes. from there, they do their wander and they they report back. So they need to report back to the class, do yes. you think? Do you think bring the class back together? Um, I'm, yeah, I'm starting to think about the assessment side of it now. Um, once they've had a chat and they've maybe looked at some of the websites that are on there, um, not that I like pulling people out of the world, but perhaps that's the way the teacher might want to go. Yeah. Um, reporting back, there's a couple of Microsoft options we could sort of integrate into that. Um, do, can they fill in a form that goes to the teacher? Um, you know, for example, um, we do it for pre-testing in humanities where our seniors made a form and he just gives us a copy, bang, and then the kids yeah. fill it in straight away. Is that a way of getting good feedback for... for um, well, it depends. See, what I'm thinking class. now, I've just got Dave. Dave, this is different. Daniel was before, in case you'd forgotten the D name. Uh, I've got Dave. Dave's a, a regular yeah, yeah. Uh, Hi, viewer of my stream. I've forgotten Daniel. Hi, Daniel. Um, he's got, <laughs> wouldn't it just be easy for chat to be popped up? And I sort of think that he's probably not wrong. If this first activity was everyone yeah. in the same world, yeah, and then everyone went in their own world to fix it, so they had their own hypothesis about what would fix it or what tests they wanted to do, um, or do we have everyone in the same world doing the tests about the the turbidity and the sampling of population and stuff like that? So working in teams to do that, so we have. You know, so let's say we have a class yeah, of 25 yeah, yeah. and we have five different tests they need to complete. The turbidity, the population of the fish, the population of the water, um, the... I agree with that. Um, I really like the idea that you don't have that many on the world. I agree with that. But I also like the idea of collaboration. Um, I kind of like the idea that if you're doing um, water testing over here, but someone over there is looking at air pollution or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I can wander over and see what they're doing. Yes. Also, in the chat, I can see what, what everybody's saying. That's it. So I like the idea of... Insight into what they're doing there. All right. So do you go down the path of... Yes, depending on... He said, depending on the size of class, everyone in the same world exactly. could be chaotic. I'm, I'm thinking it could have three different worlds running version A, B, C. Yes. And that would be awesome because then you've got three groups looking at the, the water and they can come back together and say, hey, this is how we did it. Yes, that's exactly it. So what I, what I, was, just, what I was just thinking then also yeah. is what's the possibility of if we have, so we have three tests at the moment, turbidity, sampling the fish, sampling the water flora. Um, you just mentioned air, air mm -hmm. ooh, I'm trying to move my mouse and struggling, um, air... Air pollution, yeah. Air pollution, um, which we could probably do. Actually, yeah, I, th I can think of command block ways to do that 
and giving them the chemistry elements. Um, so they do, they press a button on something um, and they get given a certain set of elements um, around that. So set it, so they press a button um, and, and that gives them a set of, of elements that, that they can then sort of interpret based on the pollution. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's four tests now, turbidity, sampling the fish, sampling the water, so water fauna, I should probably change it properly, um, yep. water fauna, um, population sample water fauna, population sample water flora, um, air pollution. So what if we had groups of four? So yes. everyone in the class does one of those tests, but only one person in each world does that test. Yeah, Does that make sense? Yeah. And then that group of four then needs to come back and that group of four is who reports back as to what they have found and what they think is causing it and what their proposed yes. steps are and then they go and do it. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, that's working. Okay, that so working. first activity, so groups of four. So uh, they've got to... One person per test currently... So they've got to come up with, um, they'll go to that area, yep. they'll meet the NPC, they'll look at the research that's available for that yep. and how it's tested. Yep. Then they've got to come up with the hypothetical hypothesis. Yeah, what they think is causing it. How they're going to report. Yeah. Yep. Um, that's got to be reported somehow. Uh, maybe if they put a poster up, um, a board up at that point and they can put their information on that board yeah. or have one blank available for them to use. Um, and then the teacher can actually just go and look at that or they can take a screenshot of that Yes. for a yeah. PowerPoint okay. or a sway or something yeah. afterwards. Um, so we could do a form or in game board poster screenshot. Yeah. Um, so bring the class back together. Book and Quill's another option that Dave's just popped out there. Um, Thank you, Dave. That's brilliant. Book and Quill. Um, all right, so they report back about what they found. So they report back mm -hmm. to class from each group. Um, includes what they found, um, what conclusions they've drawn from it, have yes. drawn from findings, um, proposed solutions, can be multiple or yes. can be one, so proposed solution, oh, um, and how do we, how do we as map makers so, I mean, we're going to have a factory and we're going to have yep. farms, are we? Um, yep. Running off to close Definitely. to the river. Um, mm -hmm. What else can we have? So I need to... Um, okay. Factory, so farms. What else do we need? All right. Um, so we've got two farms. One that's disgusting, one that's not... Um... Well, that farm's going to have a little village beside it, so that covers that. Um, are we looking at just factory pollution, or are we looking at other types of pollution as well? Are we going to have, like, traffic, where we can mm. um, have a car sitting there that's got um, gas coming from it? You gas. Know, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, see, I'm thinking like a, an old beat up sort of thing with, with yeah. smoke coming out of it. Yep. Um, litter. Litter. <laughs> litter yeah, slash litter, rubbish. Um, rubbish, yeah. So they might decide to put. Tip. So so one thing they might do is decide to put, uh, as silly as it sounds, put cauldrons down as rubbish bins. And that then cleans up the litter. But how do we as map makers ensure that that happens? 
can we do a command block that checks to see if there is a cauldron in that place? So if we say on all of the red blocks or the green blocks, could you please put down um, a bin? The bins look like this and show the cauldron. Um, but if we want the kids done, to come up with those solutions, so if we want the kids to come back and say, well, I saw litter everywhere and litter floating in the water and la, 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 I propose we put bins down. Um, that's when we give them that solution that this is how you can put bins down. Yep. Yeah, you're right. It's got to be a hidden solution. A yeah. Like the, the windmill. Um, yeah, so it's more about how we get that to happen. But that's, I mean, that, that's, yeah. yeah, so that's something else. Um, Dave's just suggested a water treatment facility. Um, oh, you brilliant, brilliant person. Yes. <laughs> can, so can solutions. Um wind farm wind power um cleaner farms um better cars um bins water treatment well do we do we get them to build it in their world and it has no effect as ridiculous as that sounds and then I like, no i like the idea what we did before where if we've got a an area and we say okay here why don't you build a water treatment plant what is that going to look like and then we do the same thing we copy it and we paste it into the um new world and as a celebration of them fixing the world they'll they'll meet a person there and say you've done it this place is looking amazing you've saved the environment blah 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 yeah now go and take photos of everything that you've fixed and that can okay. be part of the celebration. So, so in that world, what we need have... then, all right, so let's let's throw this out there. So come for a bit of a fly with me. We've got river, jungle, biomes that are, so river's nice and blue, all right? Okay. Jungles, I'm just in the river. Where'd you go? Yeah. You know, in terms of the water, can I grab... No, okay. Um, I'm going to grab some water and we're going to go have a bit of a fly around some biomes and have a look. So in rivers, it's quite quite blue, right? Yes. Compared, so there is a difference in water between river and jungle, right? So in the jungle, it's a slight bit greener. Yeah. Okay, in the swamp it's horrible, and that's the the most polluted version. So if you, yeah, okay, so fly it right up here. So probably come to me now. Ooh, go away, cloud. Or is that just depth? Well, that's something we can play with. If yeah. So look down. See how this is a light blue in the jungle and a really dark blue. No, it's a di there is a difference in the water color. If you have a look at the other side of the area there between the two deep or three deep and the two deep and three deep over the other side of the river if you compare you know this bit here which is three deep i think looks like three deep to me to this bit here which is also three deep there is a difference in color there so we've got we could grade yeah i know it's biome dave what we're talking about doing is being really tricky here and getting the yeah, kids getting the kids to build so for example um a fork in a river so one river runs down here and is really really nice and clean um, maybe a plains biome maybe a river biome so we're going to customize the map um, and one river runs down here one down here which is um, progressively gets worse and worse until the point that down here when the when the two forks join together we get into this you know mucky ugh, water that, and then the kids can work back up the river fixing the issues as they go and every time they fix yeah. it they get to the next stage of cleanliness which brings the water quality down here up a little bit and we're going to do that based on biome so what I'm trying to say here is if we have a river in river the next dirtiest is probably jungle. After that, we probably go tiger because that's sort of like a grayish blue. So I'm thinking if we, 
uh, if I yeah, it'd probably be easier if we custom to map up with all the different biomes in a row, um, so that we yeah, could actually I'm see it. That. Um, but I know there was tiger over here somewhere, and then you've got um, what's the water like in the savanna and the desert? So it's fairly it's fairly dirty in the savanna. Um, sorry, I'm just flying off and leaving you everywhere, aren't I? <laughs> so let's fill in a bit of water here. Wow, since when can you place water on water? Um, so how does that compare to savannah in terms of watercolour? It's probably the same between those two in reality. Yeah. So where's tiger? I know there was tiger here somewhere. So are you saying, which I think sounds a really interesting idea, is that they start at the, the fork and they actually, each group do as they solve one, they then move on to the next and solve the next, and each time the biome is changing behind them, that gives them that colour. Yes, the basically. All right. Um, and then when they get to the final one, then they transport to a whole new river system, showing the whole thing is now beautiful and the trees have grown back and everything. Yes, I think so. I think we progressively, every time they fix one problem or, uh, and then what we need to do as creative map makers is work out how we get that to happen. Um, yep. Thanks, Aaron, for the follow. I know who you are. You can't hide behind your username. Um, <laughs> I think it's Aaron anyway. I could be wrong <laughs> after saying that. What's your username then? Coffee Chug. It's Coffee Chug. So thanks, Coffee Chug, for the follow. Um, but, yeah, what I'm thinking is if we can progressively have... So if we had six different, um, say, six different biome maps, basically... Yes. It does sound complicated, Dave, but I don't think it's too far from the realms of possibility because it's just a custom map copied four or yeah. five times over and then all we need to do is copy students builds and the interesting thing From is and yeah. we can copy the whole the whole river the whole river system can get copied from one to the other as long as the biomes change between locations. So anything a student builds in area one will come with them when they get to area two and anything they build in area that two I don't know, and you can only copy thirty-two thousand-ish. You can only clone thirty-two thousand-ish blocks. So we're going to have to be oh, okay. careful. And I mean, the river system isn't going to be five hundred blocks by five hundred blocks. That's that's ridiculous. You can't ask students to walk that in that amount of time. Do you know what I mean? But all it is 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 customing the the biome in that area, um, and then teleporting students and their builds using the clone command to that other area. Um, we could also restrict where students could build so that we only had to copy certain areas and stuff like that. So I think there's possibilities um, of what we can do there and, and take students' builds with them and progressively make the river cleaner. Oh, I've just had an idea with that. Yeah. Um, yeah, the idea that Ooh. they're restricted, for, for example, they, they can only walk in the area where they solve the first problem. Once they've solved that problem, ah. then they're transported to the over the hill to the next section. Therefore, we don't actually have to worry about the bit before. They can't go back. Okay. But when they've finished the fourth one, they go to a world where the whole um, river is done and they can then walk back, taking photos of everything they've done, and then they finish right where they started. But hey. I like it. So yeah, way, we don't have to muck around with biomes because they're actually going to different biomes each time. Okay. Or, or, yeah. And um, yeah, that'd be. And that way, we're only copying their stuff to that final world. To the final one, and that stuff is going to yeah. be within an area. Um. 
So I'm trying to think what's the so if I slash clone no slash fill let's do slash fill because or can how big can you clone from so let's do a clone sure. from where I am now to where I, I am also you've got to be close to where you, your command block is I, I read I saw that in a YouTube video that you have to be close by ah uh, no we can fix that ticking area okay that's good uh, tilde 100 tilde replace force <laughs> look up <laughs> That is how big of a slab of terrain I just copied. Did you feel that lag? Because oh. I didn't. <laughs> All right. But that was... No, I didn't, I didn't notice it. That was 50 by 50 by 20 area. That, that should be... Like if we're solving a problem in this area, so if there is a serious litter problem here and the kids put bins down you know, as their solution to this issue, then it doesn't matter where the bins go. Doesn't they? matter where the bins go. They say, yes, I'm done. We teleport them over there and the rubbish can disappear because how can we make that happen? Um... The rubbish could be items that are sort of summoned because we can summon items. So using the summon command in a command block, we can summon items. And then once it gets yeah, teleported they won't come across with over there, the items won't come over, the command blocks will. Yeah. But if we had explicit yeah. coordinates, the trash would keep getting put in the old location instead of relative coordinates. Yep. That'll work. Okay, I, I need to write that down. <laughs> <laughs> so for the litter for the litter slash rubbish yeah. we sit there and we go okay that's a, a slash summon command block um, with explicit coordinates mm -hmm. um, that does not and it, they might only have to trigger once that does um, I reckon because um, it's it they would only have to trigger any... once every two minutes and it just builds up and up that triggers okay triggers every two minutes um, exact explicit coordinates mm -hmm. coordinates so that when copied litter doesn't show in new location getting emails okay so I've got that written down all right. That would work. So if, if we restrict, like say, that was a 50 by 50 by 20 area. So if we restricted them to a 50 by 50 area for their building and the problem they had to solve in this area, that's reasonable, isn't it? Like the area you're standing on oh, that is more, is than, enough. more yeah, than enough yeah. for a group to work out the issue and then try and fix it. Yeah? Yes. Yes. So how do we determine whether their plan works or not? So if this is the litter one and they build a water treatment plant, does it matter? Or is that okay? Um, I'm just throwing it out there. I don't have the solution. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm thinking about that. Um, this one, you've definitely got an NPC standing here talking about the litter. This is the problem that they're solving. So they, they can't really go off and investigate if they're going to do a step-by-step, -step, which is fine. So this one here... Um, Here's a problem, the litter. Look at the litter. Yeah, the NPC is saying, look at all the litter around here. It's disgusting. And then yeah. now the might, kids... might say, oh, I'm just going to walk around and pick it up because I can. <laughs> yes, but it will that appear in, in two minutes. Seconds or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I like that. I really like well, that. That's not going to solve the problem. Look and at that. It's just happened have... again. What other solutions can you come up with? I like it. Yeah. I like that a lot. Can we do a... A check um, that if their inventory's got a certain item in it, well, obviously they've picked it up. Um, then say, hey, I'd love you to be able to pick it up all the time, but how can we stop it permanently? Yeah, we can do that. Um, That's easy. You know, or get the community to help you pick it up. Um, um, and obviously, bins is one solution. Um, I mean, they might build a 
a dump truck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's great too. They might decide to build a great big skip over here. Um, and I, I do like the idea that it's actually a free build here. That they can do that. Yeah, they've got their own way of solving that litter problem, and it might not be rub. It might not be yeah. bins. It might be putting fences yeah. around and banning everyone from getting there. That's a pretty it good way of stopping it, litter. Get a Lego man. How are you going? That's not going to help. <laughs> Sorry, say that again. Tip, the tip's got to come across of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, okay. So when rubbish is picked up, say I like that you're picking it up, but that is not a long. Yeah, you gotta clean your inventory as well, otherwise it's gonna keep triggering. Then slash clear. Mm -hmm. Making a dam. Dave's just thrown out there. What about if they make a dam? Sorry, um, Dave. Can you clarify that a little bit more? Uh, around is that yeah, yeah. supporting the improvement of? water quality or breaking the improvement of water quality so if we had a dam on one side of the river um ah. and they broke the dam down is that what you're trying to say um i'm good lego man oh. thank you very much how are you i hope you're well today <laughs> hi lego man but he has triggered an idea with that dam See what he says. wouldn't be solving the problem so but it Oh, so you're saying if they made a, a dam here instead of picking up the litter, it would just separate the filth. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lego man, but unless you're a global your Minecraft mental, uh, you can't join, I'm sorry. If you're a student or a teacher in Victoria, in a public school, you can. Mm. And <laughs> That's a grey area, that one. <laughs> yes, technically, <laughs> I agree with you. Technically. Um, yes, technically, I agree with you. But, uh, yeah, so, Lego Man, if you're a global Minecraft mentor for this year and you've got a at minecrafteducationedition.com Minecraft Education yeah. account, by all means, I'm welcome, I would welcome you in. Um, but we would need to know who you are yeah. and jump into Teams or oh, Discord definitely, and definitely. we'll have a chat in with you. In this world, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so okay, so Dave's suggesting it wouldn't be solving the problem; it would just separate the the rubbish from everywhere else. <laughs> and he's also said grey areas right, are meant to be coloured in. He's also triggered a really really good idea, yep. which is power from water. Oh I yeah. Haven't thought of the that side of it. Um, so maybe there is a spot where they have to build a dam. Um, solutions are wind power, so we could also go hydropower there. Yeah. You're suggesting now? Yeah. But building a dam impacts on the water quality down lower, so do you want to go the other way and have a uh, dam? Uh, oh, maybe a, a paddle um, thing rather than the dam itself, just um, somewhere collecting the the water movement. Just quickly plug in power, yep. Sorry, say that again? I'm not going to die. Um, downstream somewhere for for and when we destroy the factory because we definitely have to have a section where they go and destroy the factory. Yes. Um, we, where we get rid of the whole um main factory pollution. Have area. you seen anywhere in the world what I might be doing here? Oh, yes. You know, so a, a barrier or a filter system to stop the rubbish flowing further down the stream is another solution to the litter problem further down. Oh, yes, like they use in the um, oceans. Those, mm. it's great big the floating, the floating, um, yeah, the floating filter system. filtery type things. Um, so we need to make sure that the kids have got access to um, information about all the different solutions that are available. Yeah. Well, they can research. So, and that's that's the thing. So, yeah, I, I mean. this is not a this is not a one lesson activity. This is no a, a fairly way. intense project. It's a yes. here is a problem. As you wander down the river, you might notice some problems. So, I still think we start with them being able to wander down the river fully, and then. Okay. That then we can have 
choose uh, one is where they can walk down the whole system yeah when they're about to start they go into section one yes then two three four and then you or the do we want them to say well i think the biggest priority is to get rid of the factory so i'm going to start with the factory or do we want to script that no, I reckon we script it. I yeah, I reckon it's going to be easier to script it too. I just wanted to throw it out there. I find it easier to go, okay, we're all working on this one thing. Yeah. Um, okay, here's position? another one. Hang on. No worries, I'll, I'll talk to the crowd while you're away. Okay, great, we got rid of him. Now, so one thing we could do <laughs> um, is that we can work crazy on the fact that if the kids are all working on the same thing, then the teacher has that opportunity to to take them out of the world and really focus on the research and writing up their historical um, report on it, a historical scene, scientific report on it. Um, and that would be a really, really good way of keeping the group together um, and focused on that. And maybe then, and it comes up to the class teacher, which is really cool, where we could allow kids to go further on um, and do it self self-paced or if the group needs more direction, then the teacher can do it um, as a group or class um, project. So it allows the teacher to go either way that way. Night, Dave. Um, and you can then... Sleep well. <laughs> Sorry, Aileen. <laughs> it, it's it's 1 p.m. in the afternoon, but okay. <laughs> no, Dave is, Dave is over in the States somewhere. I don't know where, but he's only had oh. three, hours, three hours of sleep, he says, he... so it's time to go to bed. Oh, no, definitely. <laughs> How awesome is it to work with someone in the same time zone? Oh, Thank it's you nice. for being Australian. No worries. Thank you for being Australian <laughs> too. Um, yeah, I was just saying, um, so basically we could do it that the teachers um, can either run it where all the kids are all doing rubbish first. Yeah. And then they all then have to do their scientific um, report on that, whether it's, you know, written in the book here or, you know, in their the actual books in school, whatever the teacher feels comfortable with, with that class um, in, in question. Then the teacher might say, okay, we've all done that, we move on to the next section. Or it can be far more student-centered and our world can cater for both. Yeah. Where the kids are saying, okay, yeah, I've done this one miss, yep, can I move on? Yeah, go for it. And off they go and they just do all of them and then everything's due at the end. Yeah. And that's the beauty of it. We can really cater for whatever level um, the classes or the individual groups are. So, yeah, I, I think that'll be fine. So, it means mm, it means that each individual will be able to hit a button somewhere saying, I have finished this task. Yes, and then that and teleports then them and their build. And then take them to the next section. Yeah, yeah, and teleports their build back to the final section so that they can see it at the end. Yeah, and this does mean that you're going to have a map for each group, though, aren't you? Because if you've got 25 kids and they're all on this one thing and they're all... Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, each group yeah. has an individual map. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. that's what we're yeah, saying. So, so we've yeah. moved away a little bit further now from what our initial brief yeah. was, which is fine. I love the organic production of lessons like this. Um, <laughs> I do, yes. because I think what we're creating now has a lot more depth and breadth than know. what I started yeah. with, which which was your prompt, um, which is great. Um, <laughs> so now yeah, we've just got to... Yeah, well, it's not about... It wasn't... It was never about creating a specific map. Um, I'll give your topic yeah. to someone else, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and they can come up with a. About yeah. Well, they <laughs> might. Well, they might come up with some other other really great way of doing. It. I really like the idea of this, um, for lack of a better way of saying it, and this is probably going to be wrong, but sort of your eco warrior, or your eco researcher yeah. and, and fixer a kind of thing. Um, yeah. I really like that idea about these kids having a look at the whole river and going, well, these are the issues I see, these are the issues I'm going to fix, going and researching how they're going to fix that. See, all the research, he, here's a question for you. So should all the research happen after their first tour of the world? I, th I would think that in this section where you see a lot of trash, the MPC directs you to websites. Um, now, obviously, the teacher's got a whole lot of other 
um, resources there available and on the lesson plan we can actually have links to those as well yeah um, but I think sticking to uh, st statistical information about rubbish uh, in the world um, specifically looking at land rubbish at, the, at this point here we can have some rubbish in the water can't we yeah, yeah we can float some water yeah we can float some rubbish because it does actually float well. it does actually float now items float so good so we can also look at the um ocean pollution river pollution um in terms of litter all that information will be available for the students for this particular section and then because that's going to be like you know it could be four or five lessons on this yes um and then the teacher can say okay um, we've done the section, let's move on. And there could be another four or five lessons on that. Or she might say, or he might say, no, we're going to do one lesson on this. So we'll do this as a group. Here's the information I've given you. Um, let, let's come up in a group um, for this double lesson. What are we going to do to fix this? Okay, next lesson, we're moving on. Yep. So it gives that, that depth and yep. variety that we can we can do there. For sure. Um, and if we're looking at grade seven or year seven, as you said, 13 year olds, um, we can cater for that level. Yeah. Again, in version two of this, you'd expand it. You'd expand <laughs> You're not already after making number two, are you? <laughs> I, in my head, I am. E Eco Warrior 2.0. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can actually have um, yeah, differentiation. So you could have it for the older kids or for the younger kids. So, yes. All right, so we've got a big plan here. Now, I'm conscious of you're on holidays while I'm working. That's fine. But you're on holidays, and I'm conscious that we have actually been here for an hour and a half, yeah, and you should no probably worries. go and have some lunch. Um, mm -hmm. I really appreciate your time um, and your no thought worries. process and, and for being my guinea pig for today for the first Behind the Blocks with, with um, <laughs> Minecraft Education Edition. Um, I really do appreciate it, and I think... We will have to continue this um, one other time, and actually, oh, I, I'll um, I'll have a bit of a play with World Painter, and see if I can get what I want in terms of the biomes, um, and see how that looks. And I don't know whether that'll be today or later this week, but we'll see how we go there. Um, yep. But like I, said, I can't thank you enough for being willing and able to test out this whole theory and process with me. I think it's been awesome myself. Um, I'm really happy with oh, how I'm it's come across. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think um, we came up with some really, really interesting um, ideas. And, yeah. Um, I think the kids could get a lot out of this, uh, this project. All right. And I'm hoping to have another one of these in a fortnight, and it won't be with you, Lynn. It'll be with someone else. No, that's fine. I'm, I'm aiming for <laughs> fortnightly, I reckon. Um, of these mm -hmm. kinds of these kinds of things where we get people on board and, and try and get them to sort of p put them on the spot as such and come up with a lesson plan and then work collaboratively to work out how it actually goes in a classroom. Um, Lovely. So well, I'll be watching the next one. That'd be all great. right. All right. Well, thank you for your time. And uh, oh, thanks for having me. No worries. Thanks, Lynn. Okay. Bye. Bye.